Welcome back to Totally Rad Guitars. In this episode, I'm going to go over this cool Charvel Model 5A and uh, talk a little bit about it and show you how it sounds. Few names are as iconic when it comes to 80 shred guitars as Charvel. So Charvel started in the late 1970s, early 80s, building um, custom guitars to order USA made, top quality components, necks, bodies, that sort of thing. Um, and you could get almost anything you want. You've probably heard the term San Dimas thrown around. That's where the uh, original factory was, where they built the, those guitars. And then sometime in the mid 80s, uh, Jackson and Charvel merged. So Jackson continued to produce USA made guitars, while Charvel stopped making USA made instruments and instead was used on a line of Japanese made guitars, which later um, led to guitars made in Korea and elsewhere. So. This particular guitar is from 1986, which is the first year that Charvel started overseas production. So this guitar uh, has a serial number starting with 243, um, which puts it pretty firmly in 86. It's also got a nice sticker here. It says Made in Japan, even though this neck plate says um, Fort Worth, Texas, because that's where the offices were located. Um, and uh, there's some confusion about that and much later, uh, a couple of years after this, that actually was removed from the plate so it was just the Charvel logo and serial number, um, which confuses some people. But the Made in Japan stickers, I mean, they fell off or they were missing or etc. So it, it wasn't really clear at the time because, uh, and they are very, very nicely made guitars. Um, so this one is actually uh, probably as close to new old stock as you can get. Um, it's hardly got a scratch on it. Um, and uh, it's got nice big frets. Uh, this is a compound radius neck. So up here, uh, it's supposed to be a 12 inch radius at the top and 16 at the bottom. I don't know if I really see that on this one, but uh, either way, it certainly plays wonderfully. Um, and then early models in 86 had the uh, collar or Taylor, or however you pronounce that, trim. Um, usually the top mounted um, trim, but this one has a, a fulcrum, a collar fulcrum trim. So this one, the model number is 2520. And it's basically just a uh, sort of a two point traditional fulcrum trim, but with fine tuner screws, kind of like a Floyd. It's, it's an interesting idea. Uh, and then up at the top, um, a locking nut that's behind the nut. Um, also something kind of interesting. I, I think uh, there were some uh, patents or copyrights that uh, you know you had to pay Floyd Rose for that double locking idea. So to have an actual, to put it behind the nut, they kind of got around that. This, you know, this bridge doesn't say anywhere on it, sort of that commonly, um, commonly marked, you know, like licensed by Floyd Rose patents and so on because they, you know, Floyd Rose gets like a royalty from any kind of double locking bridge design. Um, and this, even though it's a double locking bridge design, it's done in a way that doesn't conflict with that patent uh, in theory. Um, the back of the neck, you've got uh, Jackson tuners with the 135 degree set uh, screw there. Uh, it's a very nice glossy neck, but pretty thin. It's not like a big uh, boat shaped neck um, and very C shaped. It doesn't really have huge shoulders like some other necks from this era. Um, there's also, you'll notice because there's no locking nut, there's no behind the nut holes drilled in the neck, which is probably good for long-term stability, especially on a thinner neck like this, and a really smooth transition into the headstock. There's no volute here. Uh, personally, I like the volute, but I also am a big Kramer fan, and most of those have it, so it's it's just a preference thing. Uh, and then on the front of the headstock, you've got the logo, as well as a truss rod cover. In this case, the truss rod cover still has the plastic on it, um, so whoever owned this clearly stuffed it under a bed somewhere and left it alone for a really long time, because it's in pretty top shape. I mean, a couple of swirls on the pick guard, but uh, yeah, I mean, who, whoever owned this guitar treated it very, very well. Um, and then the, the logo. So this one, it says uh, Charbel in the guitar logo, but with a pointy headstock. The earlier Charbel logos were gold, and it kind of had a three and three 
headstock design as part of the logo. This one, it, it's pointy like the actual headstock. Um, and then underneath it says by Jackson slash Charvel. But the other key feature here is that just above the headstock part of the logo, there is a little TM trademark marking there and any um, those were only used in 86 so 87 and newer the same logo is used except instead of TM it's a uh, an R with a circle you know uh, reserve rights reserved um, so I'm, I'm not sure exactly why that change occurred I'm sure there's some legal implication as to why that's different so but yeah the the neck is uh, I mean it's fantastic and then uh, the dot inlays they're very um, they're very, very white, and I'm pretty sure these are just plastic. I mean, this was uh, this was out of time. As much as this is a very nice guitar, and um, you know, I, I'd wager that this is a nicer guitar than any of the current Charbel um, production line stuff. I'm sure that'll be a. Uh, I'm sure that comment will age well, <laughs> but. Um, but it was definitely a time of cost cutting for Charvel. I mean, their USA models were, you know, top tier, top quality, and then they came off these Japanese models to kind of target a, a, sm a lower budget. And they're very, very nice, but there's definitely some cost cutting measures compared to the USA models, and that's a good example. Um, but the, the fretwork, I mean, is great, so um, doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, pickups in this model, so the 86 3A has two humbuckers, and, uh, and they're on a pick guard. Later Model 3As from 87 and later, they still have the same two pickups, but no pick guard. Um, and then uh, you got volume and tone, and then this three-way blade switch, also on the later models that don't have the pick guard. Instead of a three-way blade switch, it's a five-way blade switch, which is, um, it's called the Jackson JE005 Super Switch, which allows you to coil tap essentially by choosing the in-between in position. So this guitar does not do that but the later ones do. In positions two and four on the five way, you're getting um, you know, the, the neck and bridge pickups in single coil mode, which is a pretty cool feature to have. I mean, it's, it's definitely nicer than a, a push-pull knob. I mean, you can just flip it on right there with the selector switch you were gonna touch anyway. So it seems like, um, it seems pretty sweet, especially if you're the kind of person who's playing a song, say where you wanna go from a uh, single coil neck tone directly to a bridge humbucker tone with minimal fiddling. Um, that's a really cool feature. I, I have that on a uh, Model 5 and I find it really, really useful. Um, the pickups are J80s, which I've heard is supposed to be very, very similar to the Duncan Custom, um, but I'm not sure I believe that because I have guitars with the Seymour Duncan custom pickup and it does not really sound like this one. Um, even though the, the DC resistance measures pretty close, the output levels are really different. I mean, these are definitely lower output than a custom, um, which on the plus side makes them really, really um, dynamic. These are great pickups um, and I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate in the, in the playing section, but if you have a really dynamic amp that responds to your, you know, your picking and the guitar volume, uh, you can really work, you can really get a lot out of an amp just by tweaking your volume, volume and playing with these pickups, um, which is really, really cool. Sometimes, I, I mean, I really like high output pickups, uh, but sometimes with a high output pickup, it's hard to find that happy middle ground and, uh, and these make it very easy and they've got a very nice um, attack to the, to the notes. I mean, these are um, one of the few things they didn't skimp on is these are really, really great pickups um, and uh, convenient Jackson branding there. I'm sure uh, they love that. Um, over here on the back, you've got the, uh, the neck plate as mentioned before and the uh, trem cavity, um, which is kind of, again, just like a traditional strat trem, so that, that fits in there. So this was um, this was a very, uh, very cool guitar, and I like it a lot. And uh, I'll go ahead and play a little bit here. I'm actually gonna, um, let's see. So uh, for playing this time, I'm using a uh, JCM 800-2203 on top here behind me. It's a reissue from 2005. I actually just got it like yesterday. Um, so I'm still kind of figuring out exactly how I want to dial it in. Um, it's very, very bright. It's very intense. Uh, I like that, but I do have the uh, both the treble and presence rolled down uh, to just over a hair over two. 
on the knob for both of those because they're, it's very bright. Um, and then the speakers I'm playing through is a, um, this is a vintage Marshall JCM 800 cab. So it has G12 T75s, but they're uh, not from 1986. So they're probably a little bit different than if you've played a modern cab with G12 T75s. They sound a lot different. Um, these are a lot less kind of uh, spikier and scoop sounding, a little bit more of a traditional tone. I really like these speakers. Um, and I have some new G12 T75s and I don't like them as much. So it's, it's really good. And then for the microphone, I um, am trying out something a little different here instead of the usual SM57 setup. This is a, um, an AT2020 condenser mic, which I have just off center on the cone down there. Um, and we'll see if this sounds any better um, than the SM57. I, I did a little bit of quick testing and I think it sounds like it has a little bit more, um, just a, a tiny bit more body uh, than the SM57. It gives a little bit better feeling for what it actually sounds like in the room. I think if I were tracking recorded guitars, I probably would still use the SM57 or, or maybe a mixture of the two. Um, but since this is more about the guitar than the amp, I, I wanted to show, sort of show what it sounds like in the room a little bit better. So um, so let, let's do real quick, uh, I'm just going to put it on the, uh, I'm on the bridge pickup and I'm gonna kind of change the volume a little bit on the guitar and sort of demonstrate just how much, uh, through a pretty dynamic amp like a, a 2203, what it actually sounds like um, working that, you know, picking dynamics. So I don't really know what I'm gonna play yet. I'll just figure it out. So I'll start real low volume and I'll go up to max and then I'll go back down.
Actually, that's a perfect song to demonstrate. Sort of, uh, let's do. Um, I'll do full volume, and then I'll sort of. I'll just play through that song. Um, it's Huey Lewis. So it's a good. Good example of, you know, a, a good driven sound, and then rolling it back a little bit to a little bit cleaner rhythm. <laughs> 